I'm Peter Blanc in Denver at TCT for On the Scene. The whole issue uh, now being discussed here at TCT is that one of the issues that always flummoxes us, and that is what we do in, in, within stent stenosis. With me is Jose Enriquez from Amsterdam, and he has now reported on an interesting drug eluding balloon trial for instant stenosis. So, Jose, tell me what your trial was. So, thanks, Peter. Um, so, the trial actually looked at patients with instant restenosis, either bare metal instant restenosis or DES instant restenosis. And as such, it's actually the first trial that has looked at any instant restenosis. But taking it further, I think instant restenosis is, of course, less present than it used to be. But still, when it happens, we don't really know what to do. In the U.S., actually, there's no approved therapy for it. And in Europe, we've done a couple of trials looking at the value of drug balloon. And there was actually um, a good picture from them. It seemed that they were actually performing quite well without, without the necessity to leave a stent already in a previous stent behind. So if you place a stent, you always have more problems, you have more risks, more longer dual plate therapy. And with a balloon, with a drug on it, you perhaps don't need to do that. Okay, so your trial used the balloon against what? Against the Zines Everolimus stent, so the gold standard for any type of therapy for stenting. Okay, so drug eluding stent inside previous stent and now drug eluding balloon. What was the outcome? So the outcome was that, there were non that the drug eluding balloon was non inferior to the Zines stent. However, what was interesting is what we saw. At initially, the mean luminal diameter was equal in both arms, but in the, after the immediate PCI, there was a much larger acute gain in the uh, drug eluding stent arm compared to the drug eluding balloon arm. But that would be sort of what you would imagine. Though. Exactly. I mean, if you put it in a stent, it just looks boom, great, so it is beautiful. However, this, this uh, advantage in the acute phase was completely evaporated after the six months. So late loss was actually quite substantially and significantly larger than the drug eluding balloon arm. So at six months, it came out even. Exactly. What does that tell you about preparation, Jose? Well, I think you make out an important point. I think uh, in the interventional cardiology, we've actually didn't, we haven't cared much about the pre-dilatation, about the preparation. But if you look at uh, more newer insights on newer devices, even for, bare, for, even for the bioabsorbable stents, so apparently we are understanding better and better that lesion preparation is something we, take, we should, should take seriously. And also in this instant resinosis um, disease, if we do a good job and we do scoring balloons, there's another trial that actually looked at scoring balloon versus only pre-dilatation, simple pre-dilatation, and it was better if you did a proper job. Uh, so I think this is where we need to go. Okay, well in the United States we don't have a drug eluding balloon yet, but I'm sure we will. And you know, then we boil down to the fact that if you're going to use that balloon preparation and making the initial dilation really, really secure and a good job makes a difference in the long term exactly. and may make a big difference so. in the outcome. Yeah, I thank, agree. Thank you, Jose.